Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey Blooded. My name is Dave and this is my whiskey collection. You guys have requested it and it was a pain in the ass. So I hope you enjoy this video today. Um, this is my entire whiskey collection, not including any rum or vodka or non-whiskey drinks. This is my entire whiskey collection. I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is going to be fun. So come on over, pretend you're in my house. Let's look at my collection. Pretend you're here with me in my house and I'm walking you through my favorite whiskeys. So this is everything. Total count, 107 bottles was the total count. Pretty neat. I don't have, as a small disclaimer, I don't have a bar or a basement. I have a basement, but it's not finished. There's no bar there to put all this stuff. So this is really cheesy looking to me, but it was the only way I could get everything in one area without having the bar to put it on. So once again, there's everything. Let's jump into the bottles. So starting off, we've got the Rock Hill Farms. I've reviewed this one for you guys. Really cool bottle, great drinking, nice looking. Four Roses Small Batch, cheaper bourbon, uh, but very good quality for about $25 to $30. We've got the Russell's Reserve 10-year-old bourbon. Don't like this as much as the small batch single barrel, but this is good stuff. Um, a little overpriced, I think, but not terrible at all. We've got this single barrel Hancock's President's Reserve bourbon whiskey. So this one, if I remember correctly, is the same mash bill as a couple of the Buffalo Traces. It's okay. It's actually gotten better as it sat there, as it sat there over time. We've got High West Rendezvous Rye. We've got High West Boo Rye. This is the really good one. We've got High West Son of Burai. The Son of Burai, nowhere near as good as the Burai. We've got Glenlivet 15 single malt Scotch whiskey. Fantastic single malt. One of my favorites, if you like non-peated. We've got Old Granddad 114, good bargain bourbon. Evan Williams 2005, this is my favorite between 5, 6, and 7. We've got the Hirsch Small Batch. <laughs> the Hirsch Small Batch, oh boy. You guys might have seen my review on this. This is like drinking sandpaper mixed with chemicals, mixed with grainy crap. Uh, I hated this stuff. Neat looking bottle, I guess. Blanton's, you've heard me talk about this time and time again. This is a go-to for me for around $60. Just everything about this is great for me. Eagle Rare 10, this is a mini bottle of it. I drank my big bottle of it. This is my normal sipping $30 price range whiskey. Stag Junior, good stuff. Good price point, everything else. Somewhat hard to find, but look a little bit and you'll find it. Another bottle of Stag Junior. So like I said, it's not that rare. This one's definitely darker than the other one. That's probably just oxidation, but there's... So the cool part about Stag is that there are sometimes... Uh, these are the same proof, 132.2, but I believe they've altered the proofs a little bit as they go. Uh, Compass Box, great King Street blended Scotch whiskey. Okay, cheap blended Scotch whiskey. Old Forester, single barrel Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, which is actually what I'm drinking right now. Hold. I need my drink. Never mind. Couldn't find it. I've got a different drink. Um, so we've got the Old Forester. We've got this Colonel Taylor small batch, the box of which is back here. We've got this Bowmore, this Idla, small batch bourbon caps matured whiskey. I've reviewed that one for you guys. Very good. We've got the Woodford Reserve, White Corn Master's Collection. Reviewed that one for you. Different, interesting. This Texas Yellow Rose, I think this is Houston whiskey. Don't buy this. <laughs> We've got the Knob Creek, Single Barrel Reserve 9-year-old, the 120 proof. I haven't reviewed that one. One of, my, one of my first ones that I bought. This one's a store blend, which is why it looks a little different. 1792 Small Batch. Go to good sipping... Uh, all around good small batch whiskey. Elmer T. Lee, you guys go crazy over this stuff. I don't know why, I bought six of these when they first came out for minimum, state minimum pricing. They're not worth a hell of a lot more than that. I, I like them, I just don't see why anyone would pay more than 60 for these. We've got the Willet on the cool stand I bought from their gift shop along with the glass that I bought on their, on their gift shop. So there is the Willet. Really hard to find in my area, easier to find probably in your area. Ward for Reserve Rye, one of my favorite ryes. A great mix and balance between spicy and fruity. Bowman Brothers, just bought this. Virginia Straight Bourbon Whiskey, small batch, $30 I think I paid. Got talked into it, not bad, not bad. Larceny, Weeded, this is a Kentucky Straight Small, 
or a Kentucky straight, very small batch, very cheap, $25 one. I've reviewed that for you guys. It's worth the money. The Evan Williams Single Barrel 2007, haven't opened yet. We went through that earlier. Johnny Walker Green Label, 15 year. One of my favorite blends. 12 year old, blended. Not one of my favorite blends. Surprisingly, big difference between the two. I've got two of these Bernheim bottles. One with a copper front, no age statement. One with an age statement, no copper front, seven years. I like the copper front more. Don't know why, might just be the batch that I got. Then we go into, let's jump to the front here. We've got my um, Orphan Barrel line. We've got the Rudder 20. We've got the Orphan Barrel Gifted Horse, which I've reviewed both of these for you. We've got the Barter House. I believe I've reviewed this for you. And I've got two more bottles of the Barter House because I found them for a really good price. We've got the, um, hang on one second, guys. Put my drink down because it's getting noisy. We've got the bourbon, or the, the barrel bourbon, which is an orphan barrel. This is barrel bourbon. This is a newer one too. You guys are probably seeing this. People love this stuff. Haven't reviewed it yet for you guys. We'll do that soon. Blade and Bow, the Diageo wallet grabber. Um, I reviewed this for you guys. Feel free to check out that review. It was okay. This Madman, one of my favorites out of the entire collection. This Russell's Reserve small batch single barrel. I think I just got a good batch, not chill filtered. I love this bottle. I paid 50 for it. I would buy a hundred more of these if I could find the same batch that I got here. This was fantastic to me. Sazerac Rye, this is the $30 one. Not super expensive, sort of rare, but not really. You can find these if you look for them. Not to be confused with the very expensive 18 year old rye. The Wild Turkey Forgiven, still in the box. The Whistle Pig Straight Rye 10 year old, very spicy rye bread tasting, punch you in the mouth rye. We've got a very fruity local rye, Motor City Gas, they're a local distillery. Very fruity, great for cocktails. That was like 30. Uh, 1792 Port Finish. Eh, you saw the review on this one. I, I'll just take the normal 70, 1792 Small Batch over the Port Finish, honestly. The Wild Turkey Rare Breed. I reviewed that one for you. It's a barrel proof. It's pretty good. We went through the Orphan Barrels. We've got Weller 12 Year Old, one of the rare ones I have. I was given this on my birthday by the local party store where I buy most of my stuff. He actually gave it to me. He was asking 64, which was overpriced, but not that much. But these are really hard to find now. I know you guys go crazy over this too. It's worth anything under 50, in my personal opinion. I'd pay $50 for a couple of these if I could. We've got the Rowan's Creek, which is a Jim Beam product, if I remember correctly. I, haven't, I don't think I've reviewed that one for you guys. I'll have to look. Wild Turkey 101, I just did that for you. Over here is the Wild Turkey 81. Whoops. Jefferson's Very Old Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Reviewed that one for you guys. Pretty good, a little overpriced. Bullet Rye. A local bottle. This is a Detroit distillery called Two James. This is Grass Widow. This stuff is awful tasting. Actually, a lot of distilleries around here are pretty good. I don't know what it is about this one that just kills me. It's, it's once again one of those ones that tastes sandy and grainy to me. Uh, some kind of thing they do with their distillation process or with their grain or with their um, fermentation process. The Noah's Mill, I've got a couple of these. This is a very good, uh, comparable to the Rowan's Creek, but very good product. We've got the Belvenie uh, Doublewood, 12-year-old. Not my favorite scotch. Not my favorite single malt. We've got this new Yellowstone Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. I haven't reviewed this one for you guys. So we'll see how that one compares. Makers 46, you've heard me talk about this a lot. Go-to whiskey for me and for beginning whiskey drinkers. We've got this Prohibition Edition Whiskey. <laughs> If you saw my review on that one, you know that stuff's garbage. We've got the Weller 107 Antique. Uh, you guys should definitely buy a couple of those. They're getting harder to find and they're fantastic. Got another slightly drank bottle of that one. We've got Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. Classic Woodford Reserve. Four Roses Single Barrel, one of the first bottles I ever bought. Recommended for everyone. High rye content, so it's a little fruity and Wathen's Kentucky Straight Single Barrel. This is a eight year old. So we've got uh, over here, my rare whiskey collection, just to rip through these real quick. I've reviewed all these if you wanna know them. This is not a luxury whiskey. I just reviewed that one for you guys. That's bugging me, there we go. I just reviewed that one for you guys. Midwinter's Night Dram, just reviewed that one for you guys. That's High West's uh, rye whiskey, blended rye whiskey. Elijah Craig 23, I'm the only one that I know in our group and a lot of people I know that have gotten the 23 year old. I do not have the 18, I do not have the 21. I would like to get those for my collection. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I've got a couple, I've got actually one here, one at my parents' house, both opened. I sip this occasionally, good barrel proof stuff. 
You guys should be seeing a, lot, a little bit more of those. They're supposed to be coming out with more. We've got the Flaming Heart. The, uh, this is a compass box. This is a compass box. This is a compass box Flaming Heart. This is uh, a, one of their limited edition ones. I reviewed this one for you guys as well. And then I've got this Master's Keep. I really only collected this or bought this one. You can actually find these pretty easily right now. The presentation is just so nice. This is probably something I'll keep for a very long time. I may never even open it. I just like the presentation a lot. It's got everything on the front. A really nice case. So this might be something one day that, you know, I could pass on to someone or, you know, crack open 10, 15 years from now and enjoy what's inside. That's a 17 year old. You can still find those. Down below here. So we can drop down here. Just to let you know I am still here. We've got the two Kentucky Derby bottles that I picked up for Woodford Reserve. I'll never open these. I'm going to collect these every year. They're Derby releases. These are the only two I had from this year and last year. I would recommend buying those uh, if you're looking at collecting anything. I, I need the ones from years prior, but I'm just going to keep collecting. Um, the Cast Strength Red Breast. I got two of these. Funny story. I didn't know I had one. Bought another. Now I've got two, but these are phenomenal. Buy one of these Red Breasts, 12 years old. 12 years old. I haven't reviewed this one. I will one day. It's an Irish whiskey. This Calumet Farm is one I've reviewed for that one for you guys. That one's horrible. Uh, <laughs> this bottle of rum snuck in here. I don't know how that got in there. So we've got a bottle of rum that's a store blend. We've got Henry, Henry McKenna's 10-year-old bottled and bond. John B. Stetson. I can't remember if I reviewed for this one for you guys. It's okay. It wasn't very expensive, so it was okay. And this I.W. Harper 15-year-old. So that completes this section of the house. Now we've got this section of the house. We've got the huge bottle of Elijah Craig 12. Comparing the huge bottle of Elijah Craig 12 to the small bottle of Elijah Craig 12, you can see the difference. Why do I have five bottles of unopened Elijah Craig 12? Because they got rid of it, and you should buy the 12-year-old age, age statement before it goes away. We've got the Noah's Mill that we just went over. Another bottle of Willet. A huge bottle of Willet compared to the small bottle. I just thought that was cool looking, so I bought the huge bottle of Willet. Jack Daniel's Rye. The new Rye. Jack Daniel's Single Barrel. Barrel Proof, Crown Royal's Cornerstone Blend, their new one I just reviewed for you guys. Crown Royal's Northern Harvest Rye, a new one I just reviewed for you guys. Monkey Shoulder Blend, Buffalo Trace, Makers 46, a small bottle, I thought that was neat looking. 12 year old Old Medley, Pikesville Straight Rye, Glen Morangy Tasting Pack, I've got a couple of these just to give to people for presents on birthdays and stuff like that. Hill Rock Solera Age Virgin, let's, let, Virgin, let's talk about this one for just a second. Hand designed, hand, or hand labeled. Cool design, awesome bottle. Stuff inside is actually really good and quite easy to find if you go online at all. I really actually do like this stuff. The more I try it, the more I'm wondering why I haven't bought a second bottle of that. And then now, guys, in the Pikesville, I think I mentioned, that brings me to the stuff I was talking about last week. I went to an estate sale. So these are my older bottles that I bought. So let's go through these. Uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, if you guys weren't drinking wrong, along this whole time, you're doing it wrong. Um, this is a very old bottle of John Walker and Sons, now known as Johnny Walker. So quickly to talk about this one, let me see how I'm doing on time here real quick. I'm doing okay on time. I said I'd do this in 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to do it in 15. At the top here, it says John Walker and Sons. There's a, this bottle's not in good condition, so I only paid, I think, 50 for it. On the bottle itself, it says... Federal law forbids sale or reuse of this bottle. And that used to have to be on bottles. That puts this, I believe, from what I found online, between 1940 and 1964. So the label used to be right here, but it fell off, unfortunately. So this is not in good collector shape, but um, it's got the label. This is the 12-year-old. This bottle is still sealed, though, and corked and tax stamped on here and everything. So if we opened this to drink, it hasn't evaporated at all this would still hopefully taste like what it was intended to. So this is something that many years from now, I'll either just keep as a collection, never open, or you know, when my kid graduates high school or turns 21, turns 21 would be the better thing to say that when my kid turns 21 and he wants to try a super old scotch, maybe we, we open this. So that's one of the ones I got from the estate sale. I also got this bottle of, this is fairly popular even now. This is Grant's 20 year old Ancient Reserve Blended Scotch Whiskey. I think this one is from the 60s. It's uh, from the Glenfiddich, Belvenier, and Glenlivet distilleries. I think it's 60s. It's a 20-year-old blend. I've paid 60 for this one, if I remember correctly. This one is in really good shape. I haven't dusted any of them off because it's going to take some work to get that caked off dust on there. I've got the Seagram's. So it's Crown Royal, as by the box, but then it's 
Seagram's Crown Royal on the bag here. And inside, a little disappointing on this one. So if you ever, I thought this one was already opened, so I cracked it open. As soon as I started turning it, I realized it wasn't, but it was evaporated all the way down to here. And I only tried just a little bit of this. After I realized I, I when I opened it, that it had already been opened, or that it had never been opened. I paid 25, I think, for this. It had never been opened. I was a little disappointed that I opened it, but because this one doesn't have a cork in it, it's just a screw on top, like Crown Royal does a lot of the time, it had evaporated all the way down to here, so it tasted like muddy water. Um, I, as soon as I realized I had it, had opened it when I wasn't supposed to, um, I tried it. So killed that bottle of the value, but whatever, it wasn't very good anyways. And then this one was in the best condition of all. This is this King's Ransom blend, which, you know, it doesn't have much value. I think he charged me 60 as well for this one. Hi, cat. Thanks for joining the video. There's my big, huge cat. Hi, Ellie. Anyways, uh, this is the King's Ransom bottle. I just really like this bottle. Uh, it's going to sit on my bar shelf, I think, when we get the bar finished downstairs and finish off the basement. Or I might just keep it in the box, but maybe I'll open this one day. I don't know. I, I don't believe these are extremely valuable, but I thought the bottle was really cool. It's got this cork that after you, you know, open it, you can, you can stop it with, and it's still unopened, and there's definitely, it's still full inside. I can feel it full. I thought it was kind of neat looking. I don't actually know much about it. To be honest with you, I just got these. I haven't done much research with the value on, on any of these bottles, but they're more just for me. If, they, if I was really concerned with value, I wouldn't have bought the ones that weren't in that good of quality. So guys, that's my whole collection. I feel like we've had an experience together. I feel like you've now been in my house. I feel like you guys were here looking through my whole collection with, with me, like you were one of my good friends I was walking around and showing all my stuff too, like I do when people come over and they're like, okay, whiskey guy, show me what you got. So unfortunately, I don't have as many rare things in here as I liked, as I would like, but as a newer couple year old whiskey collector and drinker, I think I'm doing pretty good. So guys, thank you for joining me here today on my magical whiskey journey through my collection. I hope this video wasn't too long, but there was a lot to go through. So thanks again. My name is Dave. This is Whiskey Blooded. I will see you guys next week with something new. Have a good one.